Hello everyone, welcome to part two of our Out Chasing Stars series on OpenCPN. If you haven't seen the first video or are brand new to OpenCPN, would strongly recommend that you click up here and go watch that one first. It'll help get you started on some of the basics, how to get things set up. This video is gonna focus a little bit more on some of the deeper features that we use all the time. My name is David, so if you're ready, let's sit back, relax, and talk about boats. To start things off, I'm going to do a very quick recap of two features we talked about in the last video, but I think they're so important that it's worth covering again real quickly. The very first one of those is going to be how to measure distances. It's very simple to get to this feature. You can have two options. You can right click. The very first item in the menu is measure. You can see there's also a hotkey M that'll work for both Mac and PC or Linux if you're so inclined. And we're going to go ahead uh, select measure. Right now we've got Starry Horizons down here in the Bahamas. We're outside of Georgetown. So I'm going to left click where we currently are. And then I'm going to go ahead and scroll up a bit towards Conception Island. This is an anchorage we're interested to go to. We're going to kind of be talking about this island using it as an example throughout this video. So this will be a good place to start. You can see in this yellow box we've got a few different numbers. The number in the upper left, that'll be the magnetic course to get from your original point to where you're measuring to. Second uh, number is going to be your magnetic heading. Third number on the upper line is the distance for that leg. And then if you have the bottom is the total for the route. So if I left click again, that's going to set another point and then we can add another leg. So say we want to come back down to Newtown Key here on Long Island. You can see now it's showing the headings for that leg and the route now includes the total for both legs. In order to finish measuring, you have a couple options. You can right click, measure off, or hit the escape key. So that's a very quick use on measuring. If we're just jumping around real quickly between island to island and we wanna figure out, okay, how far is this? This is a much faster way to do a measurement than it is on our Raymarine chart plotter. So very powerful, very simple, but we use it all the time. The next feature we're gonna talk about again real quick is object querying on vector charts. Now, for those of you who can't remember, Vector charts are also going to be known as your ENC charts, and those are the ones that have been electronically translated into chart form. So they will actually have data you can query within the charts. There are also raster charts or RNC charts, and those are just kind of digital copies. There's no underlying data within them, so you won't be able to query objects uh, on those charts. So if you're on an ENC or vector chart, you can get a little more information, which is super useful. Up here again at Conception Island, you can see there's a little logo. You can probably guess what this is for, but I'm going to right click on it, come down to Object Query, and sure enough, there's a wreck up at Conception Island. So it'll tell you there's a wreck showing any portion of the hull or superstructure. It's always dry, and a little bit more information. You can get your waypoints and that kind of information. Now, uh, we use this a lot try to find kind of little interesting things ar around where we've been. You can look at, you know, buoys and lights. Uh, also bridges. I think I mentioned that in the last video. Super helpful to be able to query a bridge. You can usually get the mast height clearance. Um, still always nervous going under those things, but very, very useful to try to get a little more information about some of the areas you're around using that object query. Now, that's a very quick little recap. Wasn't too bad, right? So the next item, that's gonna be new and let's talk about waypoints. Waypoints within OpenCPN is a super powerful function. We use, again, all the time. It's very simple and easy to set up, and let's go ahead and show you how we do that. There's a couple different options, again, to be able to uh, drop a waypoint. You can right-click, come down here to drop mark, or if you would prefer to use the hotkeys, you can do Command M on a Mac or Control M on a PC or Linux. So when you drop a mark, it's gonna drop down your default waypoint. It's gonna be the triangle. If you didn't get in quite the right spot, you can left click with your mouse, drag around and place it where you want it. Very easy to kind of 
reposition just in case you didn't get it exactly right the first time. But if you're looking for real accuracy, right click, come down to properties. You can see you've got latitude and longitude listed out. It's very, very common if we're looking at like our cruising guides or um, you know, found a blog from someone else who's notated an anchorage with exact coordinates, you want to be able to dial in exact latitude and longitude. So come on in here, type exactly where you're looking to get to and know that the waypoint is where it's supposed to be. Now you have a drop down list here under icon and there are so many different icons that you can choose from. Uh, I'm just going to Scroll, scroll while I'm talking, but I'm not going to cover all of them, but just be amazed how many there are. Now, I generally choose to just leave it kind of as the default triangle if I'm just doing a waypoint for, say, like a navigation or something like that. But if you found like a super awesome snorkel spot or want to go back in scuba somewhere, you've got icons for that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that the triangle for now. By default, it's going to show the name on the chart uh, as well, and that means you should really take the time to put in a name. It's a little bit of time spent now. It's going to help you out so much in the future when you have hundreds and hundreds of waypoints. I'm going to hammer this point home a few times during this video, so just take a little bit of time to set up a name. I find that it's helpful for me to have maybe like a three-letter kind of uh, beginning to the name, and this will I'll show you why in a little bit. Uh, so we're going to do this Bahamas. We'll call this Georgetown South Pass. That's roughly where it's located. Don't use those exact coordinates if you're trying to get into Georgetown. Look it up, do that. But for this exercise, there we go. Bahamas, Georgetown South Pass. Now, if I want, we're gonna go ahead and come up here to Conception Island. And this is an anchorage that we want to go visit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it again. Right click, I'm gonna do drop mark, then come in here to properties, Gonna go ahead, change the icon this time, come all the way up to Anchorage, which we use this icon for identifying anchorages that we've been to, really like, wanna go to. And again, I'm gonna do the naming convention, first three letters, and then we'll write conception. So, okay, now we've got a couple waypoints in here. There is a waypoint manager that you can come into and be able to look at all the waypoints that you've got listed within OpenCPN. Over here on the left, we've got this route and mark manager icon. You can come over here and then come to waypoints. Now I've got three waypoints located, uh, two that we just made and one that I'm gonna use as an example. Reason why I was trying to impress upon you why you should take the time to come up with a name, you have this filter up here. If I go ahead and start typing in the first three letters, then it's gonna pop up all the I or all the waypoints that I've dropped with using that filter. So that means it's much easier to try to find the waypoints I'm looking for. Time saved later on, very important. So I'm gonna clear that filter and we'll talk a little bit about some of the features here in this route and mark manager window. Uh, we've got a few things. If you need to get back into your properties for the each waypoint, you've got that menu option over here. If you want to um, export waypoints, this is a little bit deeper if you want to try to integrate OpenCPN into some of your uh, regular electronics and stuff on the boat. Uh, you have a few different ways to do that. If you have really integrated things in through the NMEA network and stuff, there is even options to send it directly to GPS. We don't have that, so what I would do is I would export um, the waypoints to a little like micro SD card and then I could go plug that into a Raymarine chart plotter. Now you see right now highlighted in blue we have just one waypoint. If I do like shift, highlight more, command, control, whatever your key preference you're looking for. If you then come down to export selected that'll select just those two waypoints for exporting to a GPX file. You choose where to save it and then import it into your chart plotter. Now, if you come back to the route and mark manager and you see down here, there's an export all visible. That means all the chart waypoints that are visible within the entirety of OpenCPN. So even though just on this screen, all I can see is the Bahamas conception waypoint, 
because the Georgetown South Pass and the U.S. Galveston Bay waypoints are visible, and you can tell they're visible because the icon does not have a red X over it. If I click on the icon, now you see a red X. It's no longer visible. That would mean any icon with a red X or any waypoint with a red X would not be included in the export all visible. A little bit complicated, I hope that makes sense, but be very careful if you're trying to export all visible and you have like hundreds of waypoints, every single one of those waypoints that's visible on the chart will be exported. So just, I've made that mistake. Hopefully you can avoid that making yourself. Okay, that's a, a pretty good overview of waypoints. Next, we're gonna go ahead and talk about routes. Routes are handled very similar to waypoints in OpenCPN, so you can kind of see the concepts are building on each other a little bit. In order to start a route, there are three different options this time. You can do the right click where you want to start the route, come down to New Route. You can also see the hotkey is going to be Command R on a Mac or Control R on Windows. And there's also over here, kind of on your side menu, a Create Route icon. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. If you have a sharp eye, you might notice that you get the pencil tool, the same thing for the, the measure function. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and build a route roughly from where we are in Georgetown up to Conception Island. So we're gonna left click where Starry Horizons is located. We're gonna cut through an island a little bit to come up to the channel. Just kind of make our way up here. Each time I wanna make a, a point in that route, it's a left click. I'm then going to zoom out with my scroll wheel on the mouse and kind of use the keypad to zoom up towards Conception. And now the reason I want to come to Conception is you can see if I click on top of where the anchor waypoint is located, it's going to give me a neat little function. Do I want to use that nearby waypoint as part of the route? So if you're trying to navigate exactly to that waypoint, it's very helpful. So let's go ahead and hit yes. Now we'll call this the end of the route right here. Now, to do to end the route, you've got a couple options again. Right click, come down to end route, or you can hit the escape key as well. Now, there's a few things. If you didn't get your route just quite right, there are a few different options for you. If you need to add a new waypoint into the route somewhere, you can right click roughly where you want to add it, come down here, and select insert waypoint. And voila, you've got another waypoint that you can then left mouse click and kind of drag around and place where you need it. So that's a very handy way if you need to kind of modify the route a little bit, pop in a new waypoint. Now, if you got to the end of the route and decided, oh, well, I actually didn't quite get it in the right spot, there's another option for you as well. If you right click on the route, you come down here to append waypoint, and that's going to go ahead and let you add another leg to the end of the route. So again, let's say we're going to come down to here at, at um, Long Key, Long Island, I think. Yeah, that's not key, it's Long Island. All right, so we're gonna add that uh, leg to the route. Again, just a, an example, so I'm gonna go ahead, escape out and finish that route for now. If we go ahead and right click on the route one more time, you can see we've got our properties. I'm gonna go ahead and come into that now this is, this is really cool, and one of the most common features that I use in OpenCPN for planning purposes. You can see each of the waypoints that we created for the route is listed with both latitude and longitude, the distance for each of those legs, the bearing it would take to get up to each of those legs, and also an ETA and how long that leg is going to take. Now that is based on this plan speed. So if the winds are looking good and you want to come in here and say, well, rather than six knots, we're going to do seven, you can actually come in and type in seven knots and it'll recalculate all of these things. This is super, super helpful and useful if you're trying to figure out, you know, when would I arrive to a certain pass that I need to make through at the a certain time for the tides? You can come in here, you can kind of play around with, uh, you know, the different speeds you can do change which departure date, the time of departure, all of these things. It's very, very handy and quick and easy to use. So I like this a lot. Now the other thing, again, I'm going to keep harping on you, is it's worth it to spend just a couple seconds and create a name and then also put in the from and to so you can search through these things later. So let's go ahead and do the name 
use my same Bahamas naming convention, and we'll do this from Georgetown to Conception. And as you might imagine, from Georgetown to Conception. I'll go ahead and click OK. Now, I'm going to go take you back into your Route and Mark Manager. And if this time we come over to Routes, as you can see, once again, we've got this route listed. Same sort of thing with Waypoint. If you want to uh, export this, you can export each route that you have selected. It'll be a GPX file. You can save it to wherever you want to. As you can see right here, GPX files. I'm not going to save it for now. You can also choose to show or hide the route on the OpenCPN chart by left-clicking on the icon. Now this is a important question that you should be aware of. Because we used a waypoint as part of the route, it's asking me if I want to hide those shared waypoints. Now in this instance, I do not want to. I want to be able to see the icon for that conception anchorage all the time, so I'm going to go ahead and click no. As you can see, the icon for the waypoint conception stays, but the route is now invisible, which means if you export all visible, this route would not be included. One other thing that I do want to mention that I forgot to mention with the waypoints, but again, because these two things act very similarly, you can probably pick up and figure out how it would work there. Uh, you can import GPX from somewhere. Uh, now, for example, if you've got your uh, chart plotter, and then you've got waypoints and routes that you've used on that, and you want to import it into OpenCPN, there's ways you can maybe save that to an SD card, import that, save to your computer, import it into OpenCPN, and there you go. It's not the most efficient way to integrate, and there's more ways to integrate first through NMEA connections, but that's a very quick way, kind of how we generally deal with things. Now, one other thing that I do think is, is kind of nice, you have over here on the right-hand side the center view. This is nice if you've got so many waypoints and routes that you're trying to figure out where one is. You can click on that, uh, hit center view, it'll take you, take you right to it. So that is going to be the end for routes. Now we're going to go ahead and do a very quick topic on how to make tracks in OpenCPN. In the last video, I talked about how you can get your GPS coordinates in OpenCPN using like a little GPS puck. There are a bunch of different ways you can as well. You can integrate with like, we have a Vesper Marine AIS. There's ways to do that, or like I said, through the NMEA connections. Um, if you have that information, OpenCPN will actually track your track, which is pretty nice. Over here on the left-hand side, you can enable tracking. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and enable that you can see the uh, text has changed. Now, if I click it again, it would disable the tracking. We're not moving anywhere and I'm not connected to GPS, so not a great visual representation for this one. But if you're coming into like a pass and you wanna, you know, you're gonna be doing this multiple times, you wanna track where you've come, it's a very nice way to be able to track your movements and look at them again in the future. So that's tracking. Next one, changing the color on OpenCPN. We're going to wrap up this video with one last little tip for you, and that's going to be how to change the color scheme on OpenCPN. If you come over here and choose change color scheme, you're going to notice something pretty dramatic. It's going to change a lot. Now this is super helpful if you're having to sail at some time other than daytime, which if you're going to be doing passages, yeah, you're not going to want the super bright, cheery blue screen that's going to be blasting ruining your night vision. And you still might need to adjust your display brightness as well, but going to these darker colors is going to be super helpful trying to maintain your night vision. So you can click through these. They've got a couple different options all the way down to really, really dark. Um, one more kind of in the intermediate and then back to your normal default color scheme. So there are a few different options. If you are going to be traveling at night, you want to change how OpenCPN looks. There you go. Last little tip for you. So I hope this video has been helpful. If you guys are interested, I've got another video planned. I'm thinking plugins. Super helpful, super powerful way to kind of really take OpenCPN to that next level. But we'll share that next time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one, found something a little bit useful. If you would like to see more videos that we're making along these lines, make sure you click 
up here to subscribe, or if you want to just watch more videos for the time being, click down here. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I enjoyed uh, walking through OpenCPM with you, and we'll see you guys another day in another bay. Bye, y'all.